Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for Over 50s, I'm going to be reviewing Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation. This retails for $48 for one ounce and it comes in 20 shades. This foundation promises to be a 15 hour wear, matte finished, pore minimizing, oil controlling, weightless, medium to full coverage, sweat, humidity and transfer resistant foundation that would not oxidize and would generally make my skin look better than it is. So I'm going to put it to the Angie test today. We're going to see if all that is true and if it is a keeper or not. So this is packaged in a frosted glass bottle and it has a pump dispenser. This foundation is a water, isodicane, and silicone base and it does have a tiny amount of SD alcohol but it's way down low on the ingredients list. The 20 shades are broken up into cools, neutrals, and warms but I gotta say all of these are very very warm even the cools. So the swatches that I'm showing you are 1N2 Vanilla, 2C1 Ecru, 2N1 Cashew, 3C1 Dune, 3N1 Buff, 5N1 Pecan. And look how warm they are. Can anyone tell me what is going on with foundation colors these days? Are they all buying their pigments from the same pigment house and they have all just skewed very much to the yellow, orange, tan side? Or they oxidize really badly? So just a little um, complaint if anyone in the world of making foundation is listening. <laughs> the recommended application for this one is to apply with either fingers or a blending sponge. I wore this for three days already. Today is the fourth day. All right, so going along with their recommendations, the first day I tried applying it with my fingers. I put it on over my favorite sunscreen which is the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Face SPF 50 lotion. I did not use a primer and I didn't use any setting powder. Putting it on with my fingers, this was a hot mess. It has a sticky and glue-like consistency with very little slip. It sets up really quickly so it was difficult to blend. It tended to skip over my pores leaving little black holes in my skin. Applying it with the fingers, the coverage was a solid medium, I would even say almost to full. The one nice thing I can say about it is that I did like the demi matte finish. I didn't really find it to be particularly smoothing on my pores or on my textured skin either. It cracked on the surface and it also settles into wrinkles right away accentuating them. So at the five hour check-in, it was slightly more luminous, but still not really shiny. So I didn't feel the need to blot or powder it. It was wearing well. It wasn't too worn off. It was just a little bit worn off around my nose. It was not transfer proof though. You can see that it came off on the collar of my jacket there. It was very settled into wrinkles. I felt like my lower face looked really bad, really cakey, really wrinkly. It looked really heavy. So at the 10 hour check-in, it had broken down in the most weird and surprising ways. It didn't look good from any distance. I looked so textured. It was so mottled and patchy and shiny. I looked like a pink and orange golf ball. It gave me polka dot pores on my chin. Like, what is that? I just wanted this off me. So for day two, I used a lighter weight sunscreen. I used the Tatcha Silken Pore Perfecting Sunscreen, hoping that it would help on my pores a little bit. And I applied it on one side with a sponge and a brush on the other side. I didn't use any primer. I feel like the sponge gave sheerer coverage. The brush side goes on heavier and doesn't blend as well. The coverage was uneven and broken up on the surface. The finish is more luminous with this sunscreen than matte. I did powder the T-zone with my IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pore powder but unfortunately again it had settled into wrinkles on both sides of my face although there was definitely more settled on the brush side than on the sponge side. At the five hour check-in it looked okay from a distance. It had gotten more luminous again. It was a little bit worn off on my chin and around my nostrils and it looked textured but overall it looked fine. At the 10 hour check-in it was only slightly more worn off and more sheer but overall you could kind of still see that it was in place and it wasn't as patchy as it had been the day before. It was a little patchy between my eyebrows on my nose and chin but overall from a distance it looked okay. So hoping that the third time would be a charm, on day three I used it with my favorite chemical sunscreen which is the ISDIN. I also used the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer and I applied it with my new Real Techniques 
a paddle brush just to see how that would go. And wow, can I tell you how much I love this brush? Oh my God, it was so quick and easy to use. It sheared out the foundation really nicely. It blended really smoothly and evenly. I really liked how it looked. It looked sheerer, it looked more natural. The colors seemed to be staying a little bit better, but I think it might break me out. I had three new pimples on the third day of wearing it and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't had breakouts in so long. With the primer, it didn't settle into wrinkles as much as it had without primer, but I gotta say it did still settle into wrinkles a little bit. So seemingly, no matter what you do with this stuff, if you have wrinkles, it will find them and it will settle into them. It came back to the camera at seven hours and I felt like it was really worn off everywhere with lots of redness showing through. I felt like it was looking shiny and patchy and generally kind of bad. And again, it had transferred all over my collar. 10 hour check-in, no improvements in seven hours, so not looking great, looking bad again. So three days of wearing it, three not terrific results, things settled in wrinkles every time, pores didn't look great by the end of the day. And it's giving me a little bit of that pinprick where it didn't fill in my pores there. Slightly settled into wrinkles on the forehead. Slightly settled into wrinkles over here, but not too bad, and we'll see how it wears. All right, it's a first. The Laura Mercier doesn't look gross after five hours. Okay, so this one doesn't agree with any sunscreen. So if you are committed to your sunscreen, you can't be committed to this foundation. It's not disguising or blurring anything, but it looks good. It stayed in place a lot better today. It's not all redness showing through, but it's not fantastic either. Chin's a little pink. It's definitely kind of sliding around, looking cakey and very textury there. I think it's all right. Definitely feel like this breaks me out though. I've had more pimples this week that I've been testing this than in a long time. So let's move on with the things that we do. Let's do the phone test. Okay, here we go. Sparkly, clean, super shiny phone glass. Oh, hi. Bye-bye. All right, elapsed time, what? 10 whole seconds? Yeah, fail. Let's do the flash photo test. I don't love it in flash pictures. I think it looks a little masky. And what else should we do here? Oh, I went outside. It is freezing out. I had to dig out my winter coat and my scarf and my gloves. Shockingly, I wasn't offended by how it looked outside in the bright, bright sunshine, but especially since I did use powder on it today, it didn't look like, you know, too terribly masky or cakey. I was shocked. And in the kitchen, I actually thought it looked pretty good too, so go figure. So let's go over the pros and cons on this one. On the pro side, we have that it felt non-drying to wear. Um, it was medium wearing-ish, like you could get over five hours out of it, but definitely not 10 or 15. It was definitely a solid medium coverage and you could build it up to full coverage. It is buildable and it has a nice finish. I think the finish is probably what I like most about this is because it was a matte, but not a flat matte, and it did stay reasonably not too shiny all day long. All right, on the con side, settled right into all my wrinkles. Settles into pores sometimes, makes your pores look worse in the afternoon sometimes. Um, it skips over pores in some applications. It's definitely transfers all over everything. It'll be on your clothes, it'll be on your hands. The shade range is very difficult. These run very, very warm. And I felt like it did accentuate texture, especially later on in the day. And so the search continues. Now I always like to tell you what are my top foundations in case you're looking for a great foundation. Of course, my Holy Grail foundation has been and continues to be, I always like to clean it too, um, the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. That is a beautiful foundation. My second runner up is the YSL All Hours Foundation. Then always in my top five is the It Cosmetics CC Plus Cream. All right, so that's the video for today, everybody. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.